In this presentation, arthrodesis and tension band wiring will be used to fix a destroyed proximal interphalangeal or PIP joint. Upon completion of this exercise, you should be able to identify the anatomical elements of the proximal interphalangeal or PIP joint and correctly perform a fusion of the PIP joint. Clinical indications include cases with primary or post-traumatic osteoarthritis, chronic instability, inflammatory joint destruction, and traumatic loss of cartilage in the PIP joint. The patient is positioned supine on the operating table with the arm placed on an arm table at the level of the shoulder joint. The use of a tourniquet is strongly recommended. A fluoroscope is positioned opposite the surgeon to allow intraoperative radiological examination. The dorsal approach to the PIP joint is made through a curved longitudinal skin incision. It is also possible to use an S-shaped incision if there is an existing injury or a longitudinal midline incision for an arthrodesis. A straight dorsal longitudinal incision is made on the PIP joint of the index finger. After the soft tissue layer is retracted, the extensor apparatus is exposed and the central slip of the extensor tendon is incised longitudinally. The tendon insertion is carefully mobilized. The required instruments for reduction and fixation are the 1.1 mm drill bit, the circlage wire, two 1.0 mm K wires, the 1.3 1.0 double drill guide, the wire bending pliers, the bending iron, and the wire cutters. As a rule, the desired angle of the arthrodesis is 20 degrees on the index finger and increases to 50 degrees for the small finger, although the patient's individual needs must be taken into account. Depending on the angle of the arthrodesis, the osteotomy is performed through the head of the proximal phalanx, while the base of the middle phalanx is resected perpendicular to the longitudinal axis. With the oscillating saw, the osteotomy has begun perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the middle phalanx. Both the remaining cartilage as well as the subchondral bone must be removed in order to obtain a flat cancellous bone surface. However, to prevent excessive shortening of the finger, only as much bone as necessary should be removed. The osteotomy is completed through the head of the proximal phalanx at the chosen angle for arthrodesis. By putting the two flat osteotomy surfaces together, the intended angulation in flexion is checked, as well as the angulation in both ulnar and radial directions. The osteotomy surfaces can now be aligned. The distal fragment is stabilized with a reduction clamp. A transverse channel at least 0.5 cm distal to the osteotomy, is drilled in the dorsal half of the middle phalanx with the 1.1 mm drill bit using the appropriate drill sleeve. The circlage wire is straightened to facilitate advancement through the drill hole and is then inserted. On the opposite side, the circlage wire is taken underneath the extensor apparatus, taking care not to injure the digital nerve and artery. Starting about 1 cm proximal to the osteotomy, two 1.0 mm K wires are inserted parallel from the dorsal cortex of the proximal phalanx into the palmar cortex of the middle phalanx. 
The sharp trocar tips should not interfere with flexor tendon gliding, so it is important to check the correct position under fluoroscopy and eventually pull back the K-wires slightly. Both ends of the circlage wire are wound as a figure of eight around the two K-wires and twisted together, as shown. Using the wire bending pliers, the twisted wire is further tightened. It is important to exert continuous pull on the circlage wire ends, so both wires are twisted around each other. Twisting only one wire around the other can lead to slippage of the twist on the circlage wire. The wire ends are then cut with the wire cutter. The K wires are bent with the bending iron. The wires must be shortened with the wire cutter and bent away to the side. Finally, the twisted circlage wire is trimmed and bent to the side to minimize irritation to the extensor apparatus. The extensor apparatus is repaired at the end using a running non-absorbable suture. You should now be able to Identify the anatomical elements of the proximal interphalangeal or PIP joint and correctly perform a fusion of the PIP joint.